Hey you guys, it's your girl Jasmine J back with another video. And today's video is going to be about the pros and the cons of being a probation officer. And as you can see, pretty girls can be probation officers. I would definitely say um, the area that I worked in, it was more females than males in this role. I believe that males are usually like the state troopers or the police officers or the federal agents, things of that nature. So if you would like to hear more about my experience and what I thought was the best and the worst when it came to the job, just stay tuned. Let's get into it. And of course, I'm going to start with the pros because, I mean, y'all want to hear good stuff first, I guess. Whew. And mind y'all, like, I don't have much experience, but being in that role will teach you a lot. So the first pro is you get a take-home vehicle. So this vehicle will allow you to commute back and forth from home and to work. And then also whenever you have to do your field visits. So you do have to see your clients out in the field once per month or twice per month. Not, I'm sorry, not twice per month, but bi-monthly. So every other month. So that does occur. So that vehicle is specifically for work purposes. Um, a lot of people have gotten in trouble in the past just from taking the car to different places they wasn't supposed to be going. But you can take the car whenever you have to go to lunch or things of that nature. It's specifically for work purposes only. Okay. And they did track our mileage too. So that's how you know, like you just couldn't be driving everywhere, especially like if you didn't have your own personal vehicle. So the second pro is that they issue you a gun, but you have to qualify for this gun. You, they just don't give you no gun and expect for you to know how to shoot it, things of that nature. So you have to go to basic training and I'll get into that, which is one of the cons. You have to go to basic training and you actually have to qualify to shoot this gun. But before you go to basic training, they do have like different trainings um, each month that help you get familiar with the gun that is used and just to help you shoot better. Because you do have to make a 75 or above in order to qualify. And you only get three times to qualify at the basic training. And y'all, I never shot a gun a day in my life and I needed all the help that I can get. But luckily I passed. I think I passed with like an 80 or so. Um, but yeah, so we shot with a M&P Smith & Wesson 40 and that gun did not have a safety whatsoever. And once you are a certified probation officer, you do get this little license um, that you can carry and conceal because of your status. I don't think you can take like the gun out of the state. It's so many stipulations when it comes to the gun, especially say for instance, like you have a home intruder and you try to shoot someone with that gun. It's like a whole general statue, I believe, that goes for using state issue guns like off the clock. So, but I mean, they issue a gun if you never had a gun before never shot a gun before it's definitely great when it comes to like getting that type of experience and overall just feeling safe so the next pro is going to be flexibility so i'm usually an eight to five person like i don't care if you know you all offer flexible schedules that doesn't bother me but i know some people that have kids and things of that nature like they will definitely need assistance with that be having a job that is flexible to their liking so for this job we will work eight to five i will usually work eight to five on my court days and you can also work one to ten shifts so your one to ten shifts are going to be the shifts where you will be out in the field so you'll work in the office between one to five and you will have your office visits or you can get caught up on some work depending on how high your caseload is or you can see your clients in the office and between 5 and 10 p.m., that's when you will be seeing your um, clients or I, I know I say clients, but I mean offenders, probationers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
So when I first started, I was working with a partner and then we'll just team up and go to different homes. But y'all, it got real. And I was like, I got to work by myself or I'm not going to get my work done. So yes, that's that. And the next schedule option that you can do is call a split shift. So say for instance, you have a doctor's appointment at 2 p.m. You can go to work from 8 to 12 and then you can go home and go to your doctor's appointment with your personal car. And then you will work from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, just getting home business done. So that was the, I guess, flexibility when it came to the job. And then you would, I'm sorry, it's one more. It's one more, it's one more. And I did like this, I did like this, y'all, it was one more. So the next option is where you will work on a weekend. So say for instance, you'll work one weekend day out of the month and I'll work on Sunday through Thursday and then I'll have Friday off and then of course Saturday and Sunday. Or for instance, say um, you need to take Wednesday off during the week you can work that saturday so it was very flexible if you didn't want to use your personal or sick time because a lot of people do try to save that so they can retire early but outside person you got it use it so the next pro is that every day is not the same you guys um one minute you will have court next minute you thinking that you're just going to have Office visits, office visits all day and then you end up arresting someone which can take forever or arresting multiple people. You may have to assist with a search or um, multiple drug screens during the day. It's, it was always different. It was always different. No, every day was not the same. I can say that for a fact. And if you're the type of person that likes repetitiveness, when it comes to the job, so you want to make sure that you're doing A, B, and C, and D every single day, this is not going to be the job for you because you're constantly burning out fires every single day, every single day, seriously. And that goes into my next um, subject, which is going to be the cons of the job. I'm sorry, that was all the pros that I had. Sorry. So the cons of the job... I was constantly burning out fires all the time. Like sometimes it seemed like I could never catch a break. Like I was always doing something. And I would say that case level was very, very high. The most that I had of heads that I had to supervise was 80 people. And that's a lot of people when you have to do these office visits, when you're in court all day, when people need help doing arrests, because you can't do arrests by yourself, you have to have someone else. When people need help with drug screens, it became a lot. It became so much to the point like where I was stressed out and I had a migraine and I got sick on the job and I had to go home and reevaluate life. So the next um, con that I had was the high turnover rate. Whew. That place had a high turnover rate. Like seriously, people were leaving left and right. It was like, who's going to leave next? Like, is it you? Is it you? Like, have you been applying to jobs? Because it was just so stressful. It was very stressful. And as soon as someone leaves or you know that they are about to leave, you're going to get at least three or four of their cases, which is going to maximize your numbers that you already have. And that's just going to build up more and more stress. It really is. And it wasn't a hard job at all. The job was very easy, but it's just the stress that you have when your supervisor is over your head and he or she wants you to do multiple things, but you have to do this, that, and the third first. And the model that they lived by was do the best that you can. And all I could do was the best that I could, like seriously. Alrighty, so the next con that I have for y'all is that there was no room for advancement. After the PPO, you could either go to a field specialist, which that was very rare. And the field specialist is someone that has been on the job for a while, I would say at least four plus years, because some of these roles, you have to be in the job for a certain amount of time in order to even apply. And the positions would also be internal as well. So the field specialist basically is a trainer and they train all the new probation officers that come in. 
you can either be a chief, and I believe that is six years to get into that position. And sometimes they may not have positions in your area that you live in or county that you work in so that you'll have to so you'll have to go somewhere else and apply for that position so after the chief probation officer and just let you all know chief probation officer is going to be your supervisor that's what they call them chiefs um you can be either an assistant jdm judicial manager i believe or the judicial district manager so you will division manager i believe don't give me the line just the higher ups of the higher ups, basically. You can go up, up, and up that way. But like, as far as a probation officer being chief, like, it's kind of likely you, know, <laughs> you may or may not get it. And it's not like position, so there isn't like an in between or like other things that you can do that will have a pay raise. It's just probation officer chief, and then you could possibly go to a higher up position and after that you can go to another higher up position but most of the time from what I saw it was just luckily you made it to chief by the grace of God and that was that and also you guys they do have specialized caseloads which um they have few I know some of them have like mental health not in my county but I've heard of mental health officers um, drug treatment officers heard of it wasn't in my county but what was in my county was the gang officers and the sex offender officers and domestic violence officers as well so they will handle those cases um, for offenders who have those type of crimes y'all I know you want to fulfill your dream as being a probation officer, but they don't pay well. They do not pay well for everything that you have to do. Like I said, it's a high caseload, high turnover rate, a um, lot of burning out fires and just dealing with a lot of nonsense. And then the people that you deal with too. I would think for these public service jobs, they will pay high, like up to here they don't whatsoever and i just don't get it i don't no i don't get it because to me it's like we do a lot we do a lot with these people for probation officers we carry their hand like every step of the way like we're the ones supervising them from the day they get sentenced to probation until the probation ends. Mind you, this can be 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, 48 months, five years. Like, you're constantly with these people. And mind you, these people are criminal career offenders. They keep getting in trouble and trouble and keep racking up more charges and offenses. And then they'll get revoked, meaning that their probation sentence um, becomes an active sentence. So they're to the time. They'll go to prison for four months, y'all. Four months. Four months. They'll come back to you on post-release, which is parole. They changed the name, y'all, but post-release is now parole. I mean, I'm sorry. Parole is now post-release. Yeah, I got it right. But yeah, so it's just like, it's a constant door. It's a constant door. Like, people be like, oh, you got so-and-so? I had him in 1999. Oh, you got so and so? Yes, like these, they don't understand. And then off, I know I'm ranting y'all, but I, I gotta keep it real because if you're really like about to pursue this field, you will get so upset sometimes. And I know they say it's nothing personal, but you're trying to help someone who can't help themselves. That's what you're doing. You're trying your best, but they don't even care. They don't care. And you care more than they do. So it's like, what am I really doing here except for wasting my time? Because you don't care, so why should I? You see what I'm saying? Like, that don't make no sense to me, but I just think it's so much that goes into it, y'all. And you'll get a new case on your desk, and you look, and you know what? I'll just make up something. I mean, it's a real scenario, of course, but I'm going to just make up something. So you'll get a new case on your desk. You'll do all the checks, you know. Oh, this ain't only a fence. Hmm, okay. Um, larceny, motor vehicle. Um, they stole something else in my car or whatever. All right, this going to be easy. Like, you only have one offense. Like, it's nothing. 
hey, how you doing, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you the rules and regulations of probation, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. All right, it's time for me to drag screen you. You're going to be clean or you're going to be dirty? Let me know right now. I'm going to be clean, Miss Johnson. I'm going to be clean. And then we do the drag screen and, like, you're positive for, like, five substances. So it just became to me, like, everyone does drugs. Like, okay, I ain't going to say everyone. But some people do drugs, y'all. Most people do drugs. <laughs> Most people do. And it's so crazy because you're thinking like this is going to be an easy case. Like we want easy cases. We don't want cases where you're eventually going to become an absconder and just run away from your probation and make your whereabouts unknown. We don't want that. We want the easy cases. We want to be able to give you the sources, the resources that you need in order to be a self-sufficient adult. We want to get you off of this as much as we don't. We're not trying to be a probation officer forever. We want you to get off of it soon, quickly. Like we want you to do what you got to do so that you can go on about your business. That at the end of the day, like that's what we want wholeheartedly. We don't want to just keep people on probation. No, I'd rather you get off probation. You get off two ways. <laughs> okay. You can either get off by successfully completing or I revoke you and you can just do your time and then that's it. You see, like, it's either two ways. So with that being said, it's just, it's, it's so much that goes into the job, y'all. I could go on and on and on, but <sighs> anyway. And so my last statement is going to be that you are always going to have different pros and different cons with any job that you work for or any field that you're in. Like that is just always going to be. But my motto is the pros have to outweigh the cons. If you all happen to have any questions that you can think of, maybe if you want to know 10 things or 20 things you didn't know about probation officers or maybe like the hiring process which was long just anything um feel free to comment down below if you care please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time you all have a good day bye bye